Ah, Bloodborne. A game that unfortunately, despite having the same last name, isn't associated in any way with the Jason Bourne series. It is, instead, a terrific way to find out if your girl is into BDSM without actually asking her that question. If she enjoys this game, then there's also a high probability that she'll enjoy a nice Milwaukee blizzard. The first challenging task of Bloodborne is creating a valiant warrior. And well, my first attempt ended up looking more like a post-op Michael Jackson than somebody who was ready to do battle. <laughs> Why does he look like post-op Michael Jackson? <laughs> Oh no. My second attempt, however, did go a lot better, and instead of looking like we just slept with Macaulay Corkin, we were now looking like John Lennon if he made it into the second half of his life. So I wake up in a random room with no recollection of how I got there, or what happened the night before. A similar feeling to the one I get when I spend a night at my uncle's house. I'm also now wearing some kind of fashionable hood that wasn't there before, so Questions are still floating through my head as to whether or not I was roofied, but at least if I was, I seemingly got some sort of reward out of it. I hear some noises coming from the next room, so I go and investigate. To my surprise, there's a rather large good boy, so I try and give the big fella a stroke, but just end up chopping away at his chest like I'm Ric Flair. The good boy then proves to be not so good as he eats me alive. I once again wake up confused in a new location. For fuck's sake, this really is beginning to feel like a weekend at my uncle's. I think you're supposed to explore this area and gain some sort of helpful tips or weapons, but I just travel straight back to the fight with the not so good boy, as my masculinity can't take being defeated so easily. Much like my battle with depression, I was determined to fight this with my bare fists and a lot of masturbation, I mean determination. Determination proved not to be enough though, as I failed this challenge more times than a frat boy has had unconsensual intercourse. So, with my genitalia tucked between my legs like a pre-op transgender, I make my way back to this afterlife and pick up myself a good sized saw cleaver and a hunter's pistol for reassurance. Finally, the time has come. I can kill the first enemy of the entire game only 20 minutes into my playthrough. I'm really dragging this out more than a YouTuber who has some news, but won't get to the point until at least three mid-roll ads have played. Oh Christ, I died again, my confidence really has hit rock bottom. This is what it must feel like to be an illiterate on exam day. Normal men right now would begin setting up the noose, but I'm no normal man. I'm a gamer, I've been here before, so I decide to dig deep and go again. I do it. I defeat the not so good boy in one of the greatest moments of my entire life. I felt a level of confidence only really comparable to Ratatouille when Linguini finds out that Remy can cook. I make my way outside on what is a rather lovely evening here in Bloodborne. If anything, it is a bit brisk, so I could have done with an extra layer, but hey, I'm grateful. Whoever left me like this could have left me undressed, but at least they gave me enough to not catch a chill. I meet some of the locals, and well, let's just say they're not the friendliest bunch. I try to greet them, but they just attack me for no apparent reason, so I have no choice but to slash through them all. As I try to find more locals and figure out what actually happened to me and how I got here, I realise why they're all so aggressive and slightly depressed. There must be a mass funeral, because look at them all walking here wearing black. I mean, what's the other explanation? Obviously, I'm feeling pretty awkward now, as I still want to know what happened to me, but this poor town must have been through so many hard times, that I'm afraid no one's going to give me the answers that I need. I'm starting to get the impression that this town isn't the most positive place to be, not only because everyone's dressed in black and seems to be attending some kind of funeral, but because there's also some kind of mass beast that's at least 20 foot tall, weighing over a thousand pounds, just strolling across the back alleys. The geezer's feet must be at least size 28, and when he takes a step, it vibrates the entire street. So the people living on this corner must not get any sleep whatsoever. So here I am to eradicate this problem, to take down this beast, to free these people and let them get some sleep. So I tuck my shirt in, as we don't want that getting in the way, and take some advice from my uncle by sneaking up on the target. Stealth clearly isn't my strong suit though, as he turns around very quickly, and oh my god that's a giant weapon, is somebody overcompensating. I thought this was just going to be some kind of plus size pest control, but it turns out that he wants a fight, and that's exactly what he gets. If you can call a fight being killed in two swipes. So I'm in for round two with the big fella, and this time I take the tactical aggressive approach. 
All is good until he decides to show off that he has one of the best long jumps I've ever seen. Like seriously, if it isn't against the rules to enter the Olympics at 20 feet tall, then my guy should seriously consider that as a career path. Even if it is against the rules, he should still take part anyway. Because well, just look at Russia. They didn't care that steroids were banned, and that's the kind of independent thinking that I like to see. Obviously I know really that he wouldn't be allowed in the Olympics, I was just telling that entire thing to hopefully distract you from the fact that just before I died, I attempted to take a healing potion to only just take something that instead took down my health. For my first hour of playing the game, I really did think I was healing myself with that button I was pressing. I decide to leave the big lad alone for now and let him roam that back street and see what the vibe is further down the street. It turns out I was right. There was indeed a funeral, but it was for the dog that I killed earlier. I guess it makes sense now why the entire town wants me dead. I felt like a teenager finding his stepmom stuck in the washing machine. Guilty, but knowing I had to do what I had to do. I just kind of start slaughtering them all as it seems I don't really have another option, as if this town wasn't having a rough enough week as it is with the dog being dead. Now all their wives are widowed. It is kind of strange though how they can perfectly organise a unified funeral with a strict dress code but still can't manage to kill one random guy who's just been roofied. Like did not even one of you guys watch a YouTube tutorial about the basics of jujitsu to then go to school the next day with the hopes of standing up to your lifelong bully to only then be swirlied and live out the rest of your teenage years plotting how to get a gun inside the school but never actually go through with it due to fears of serving a lifelong sentence in prison. Just asking that for a mate. So with corpses everywhere, I decide it's time to move on up, as I can hear someone banging on the double doors of the street. When I get to the other side, I'm greeted with a big old boy who looks like a relative of that plus-size rodent we tried to take out earlier. Clearly no one told him that those doors have been locked, and that he can just go round the back if he really needs to get through. With the guy seemingly in a pretty bad mood, I decide to just ignore him for now and keep on continuing up the stairs and onto the big bridge, where I'm greeted by not one, but two of those giant dogs that I fought earlier. You know, the one that I had to fight about six times before I actually killed it. So it's clear I've got to make a decision here. Do I fight them or do I run? Of course, I'm a gamer, I decide to fight them. Then I see how much health they have and I decide to run. But when running back, I was greeted with the plus size rodent who scared me out of my chair as it was clear that all the commotion had caught his attention. So with the big boy and the two not so good boys chasing me, the odds were stacked against me. But here's where my high IQ and gaming experience comes in handy. I'm out here switching to 4D chess while they're still playing checkers. I trap myself in a corner, also known as the worst possible thing to do in a Souls game, and die without even getting a couple hits in. Obviously dying just completely resets all that progress I just made, because this game wants you to feel the equivalent pain of a Starbucks barista when they see four suburban vegan white girls walk in, as they know that coffee order is going to be more confusing than Australia's ban on wearing pink pants after 12pm on a Sunday. I'm serious, that's a real law, look it up. With the anger coursing through my veins, I felt like nigh was the time to take on the street rodent. If I couldn't defeat Mr. Plus Size now, I had no chance of getting any further in the game. I was hoping if I defeated him as well, it would somehow send a message to his relative across the street that he should be afraid. So, much like my tactic with my cute neighbour, I decided to play it slow. We've made eye contact once over the last five years due to me peeking through her window because, you know, I didn't want to overwhelm her and take it too fast. And after playing it pretty well, I then discover that Molotovs are actually relatively useful as it takes down a good chunk of the boy's health. So that's what I do. Dodge in, play it slow, get a few hits in, and then wait for the Molotov opportunity. And there it was. One plus size rodent was down. It was now time to take out the second one and then I think we were ready for a boss. It was once again a tactical masterclass on the relative. He took a Molotov straight to the cranium and then all that was needed was a few swings of the cleaver and he was done for. Next up it was the dogs and I defeated them with ease. Nah, no, I'm kidding. Obviously I died multiple times, getting so frustrated to the point where I just took my blood echoes and went to the creepy afterlife place to buy myself some more armour in hopes that I could actually survive for longer than 5 seconds. And well, I still couldn't survive for longer than 5 seconds, so then I took the tactic of just running straight past them all to get to the boss. You might be thinking, well, how are you going to defeat the first boss in the game if you can't even defeat two measly dogs? And to that I say, just watch what unfolds in front of you. 
The cleric beast dives in, and the first thing I notice about his appearance is how hench that left arm is. I mean, it's pretty easy to see which arm is his masturbation arm. Then that also got me thinking, what kind of videos do you think the cleric beast beats off to? I know, I'm asking the philosophical questions that we all need to know the answers to. He had a long reach, so I just tried my best to stay in close and hack away at the bottom half of his body. And it was a tactic that was working pretty well. I got him down to a decent amount of health, but every time we would separate, I also seemed to lose health myself. But who would have guessed that if you traded blows with something eight times your size, you would be the one that would end up being more battered. The cleric beast is nearly on half health. But due to my lack of experience, I have no health potions left, and I'm literally a sneeze away from death. Am I about to show you one of the greatest moments in gaming history, or are you about to feel as disappointed as every girl that steps in the bed with me? While things were looking up, I was feeling confident. We got the Caleric Beast to half health, and that's when I made the mistake of stepping in on low stamina. He got one swipe away, and that was it. I was done for. The PP had shrunk and nearly been inverted. I was way too hurt to try again, so that's where I called it quits. But if you guys do want to see more Bloodborne, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate it. A big thank you, as always, to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel, I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I just want to give a huge shout out to my Motherload Void Boys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Walls of Valhalla, Bjorn Van Den Hatter, Charlie Wardock, and Voice Game. Thank you guys for your support.